Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is Psychic Medium Raymond Guzman, and today I'm going to be doing a celebrity psychic mediumship reading on Miss Dorothy Dandridge. I hope I pronounced her last name correctly. Um, a lot of people have asked for this uh, video to be done, and I personally, up until now, I didn't know who Dorothy Dandridge was. I had heard of her remotely uh, in the past, but I, I didn't know that she was one of the first african-american uh female actresses in hollywood to be very successful and have a very big big career um at you know a time in a period where things were changing in the world there was a lot of uh, civil rights movements um a lot of african-americans were treated horribly during this period of time so for her to be accepted into you know that kind of um uh, glamour of Hollywood, you know, into that the showbiz as an, an actress during that time was something that wasn't seen before. And um, I'm going to hopefully with this reading, you know, uh, give to all of, my, all of you viewers that have requested this video some insight because there's a lot of conflicting information regarding what was her cause of death. Um, and she's actually, um, you know, uh, she where she ended up uh, dying was uh is one of the places that i find very fascinating uh and i'm very uh, drawn to as well which is west hollywood uh california or we weho i believe that's how it's pronounced um which is in los angeles california uh but miss dorothy dandridge for those of you that don't know i'm going to give you a little bit before i get into the reading immediately um the backstory she uh, grew up in a you know a semi poor you know kind of a uh, a family and she was from Ohio and uh, it was during the Great Depression and all of that that went through you know so uh, she grew up in, in that kind of period and then I believe the family migrated over you know they came to California they moved to California and once they were in California then she attended school there and I believe then she also um, went into acting you know and it, her career was something that um, that blossomed over time now, immediately when I get uh, into her soul, I see, you know, when I look into, uh, I read photographs when I do private readings and also when I do celebrity readings. So I look at the photograph and I look at the eyes. It doesn't matter if this wasn't like, because this photo here is not her most recent photo uh, right before she passed. Uh, this is uh, when she was a little bit younger. Um, she did pass at the age of 42, I believe. Um, but when I tune into her soul, she's someone that's very sweet. I don't feel like she was a diva and she wasn't someone that was very demanding, which is something you see a lot in today's uh, entertainment industry, especially among actresses or, you know, singers and stuff like that. Um, I don't see that she has uh, she had any kind of bad bone in her body. I feel she was the same way on camera. She was off camera, very sweet, very caring and very, um, very much adaptable to change. She was someone who wanted to get ahead. She had uh ambition but when i say ambition is not to be misconstrued in a bad way i feel like she had ambition to make something of herself and she did she did you know she was someone that was very beautiful i mean looking at her you know she's exudes um sophistication demure she's she was very demure uh very um just polished you know she looked very very beautiful and i feel like she was also a good actress and people knew that she would have um, faced a lot of discrimination. I feel like she was constantly fighting people, not physically, but verbally, you know, and getting into these arguments and um, her being attacked, her personal character being attacked by a lot of uh, people in the industry that were white, you know, and I'm not turning this into a race game, but I'm just having to refer to people as white or black because at the time, this... Um, this was about race in Hollywood. It very much was. It was everywhere in the United States. Um, you know, her career was in the, the mid 50s to, you know, or fifth in the 50s to uh, mid mid 60s. So this was the pivotal time of the civil rights movement of a lot of racism, a lot of prejudice among, um, you know, the whites versus blacks. And and uh, I feel like, you know, she kind of uh, endured a lot of that, you know, but it would have been at a bigger magnitude because she was on screen, you know, and she was someone that was an actress. So she was in public eye. So she would have experienced a lot of this from actresses, from actors, from producers, people that um, were, you know, perhaps 
uh, following in the movement of racism in many ways. So I do feel like she was discriminated and there would have been more. She would have had more success had she been uh, in a different era like now, like today. And oddly enough, you know, when I see her, I immediately think of Halle Berry. You know, I don't know why. But that's the comparison that I get, like her soul and Halle Berry's soul is very much like kindred spirits in many ways. And that's just something that I get. It's very kind of spooky in many ways because I swear as I'm doing this reading, I'm looking at my computer screen, I'm looking at her and I feel like her eyes can just stare through you and I see Halle Berry like m meshing with her. So I feel like uh, I think that Halle Berry did do a role or did something in memory of Dorothy. And I do feel like in many ways that she would have her Dorothy's soul would have been present at that time and she supports whatever was done by Halle Berry. Um, but I do get, you know, that she definitely uh, was someone that was very, uh, she didn't like conflict. She wanted, her her passion was acting and, and doing, you know, what she did and performing. I feel like she was also good at singing. I, I hear music. I don't know. She, she sang. She was like a performer. But this is what I'm getting from her soul. She was multi-talented. She had different skills. Uh, so I don't get that she was just in one particular area. She was multi-talented, uh, definitely multi-talented. And I also feel like um, when I get into her soul, you know, about her passing, um, there was speculation that she had died from an embolism uh, due to an injury that she had sustained on her foot uh, with the bone marrow. Basically, the autopsy, that, or they said that they believed that it was uh, that she had fractured her foot on. Uh, a few days before in a gym and that it broke off a piece of fat from the bone marrow somehow and that traveled up to her lungs and caused like a clot a blood clot to then have an embolism I'm giving you a background of what you know what is being said about her death uh, and then the other thing that they had said was that they had found supposedly um, an antidepressant in her uh, in her system, in her blood uh, system. So they think that, you know, that maybe she would have died. She died of an overdose. So it was kind of inconclusive when it came to the autopsy versus, you know, what the, you know, what they, they thought, uh, the first speculation. So I'm going to get, get into this a little bit deeper. Um, when I get into her soul, it was very conflicted. She was married twice, and I believe she did divorce both times. And um, I feel like she really wasn't in love with the men. I feel like she did care for them, but there was not a true soul connection with the men that she would have married. She had a lot of people doing her dirty with her money, um, taking advantage of her because, you know, they figured that she was a woman. And during that time, you know, that... Um, I feel like the men that were handling her accounts and her money, they were actually stealing from her as well. So they, that is something, you know, that um, I feel like she found out later. But there would have been some issues uh, definitely with money around her. Uh, not, you know, I feel like when it came to money, she was good at managing it. But she always had someone, you know, managing and trusting them that they were going to do her right. So she definitely had a lot of emotional loss when it, and money loss when it came to her career. And that kind of, you know, made her feel in a position like, you know, she was being attacked, sent her into a depression, a big depression as well. Um, but, you know, I feel like her death, what it was all centered around love. And I'm going to get to that in a minute further. But I do feel like during her career, um, another thing that would have affected her marriages were, were would have been the attention that she would have been getting from a lot of the white men. Uh, that she would have been hanging around on set, you know, or during her, you know, socializing, etc. Again, you have to keep in mind where she was. In, she was in Hollywood. Hollywood in the 1950s and 60s, it was all about Marilyn Monroe, Elizabeth Taylor, uh, you know, uh, Joan Collins, and all these celebrities, you know, that uh, it was a very uh, glamorous time. And back then you know as you can see how she's dressed in this photo they took pride in their appearance and it was all about you know the glitz the glamour the um it, it wasn't like today present time i feel like back then they took a little bit more seriously the image you know and so she would have had it really hard as far as like trying to stay in shape 
trying to meet the demands, stay thin, stay, you know, uh, in a way where she would be accepted into. I feel like she didn't feel fully accepted when I get into her soul as her soul's coming through the messages that I'm getting as I feel like she didn't feel accepted by people. And so in many ways, she asked herself, you know, why was she black? Why was she um, the skin color she was? Um, why did she have to face a lot of this discrimination? She would have had breakdowns, uh, crying, you know, it was a very sad situation, but she put on a brave face when she had to go out in public and do her, you know, her, her, um, her career, you know, when she was, was doing her career, there was a lot of, of putting on a brave face. Um, she does say that, you know, a lot of the men did mistreat her and I do feel like she did have some affairs outside of her marriage and I'm sorry to say that, but that's what's coming through. I feel like there was a lot of men that were powerful producers that would have been or powerful positions in Hollywood that would have, you know, propositioned uh, to have a night with her uh, in many ways. And so, uh, you know, again, I feel like she would have compromised some of her um, integrity to kind of get ahead in the industry, even though she didn't need to do it because she was so beautiful and talented. She had the talent, but you, again, you have to consider there's a lot of this that goes on in today's uh, world with actresses and people of importance in Hollywood, regardless if you're in Beverly Hills or you're in Bel Air or you're in uh, West Hollywood or you're in, you know, it doesn't matter. It, there's a lot of this that goes on between these, um, these celebrities that, you know, have, um, a presence you know it's not just about acting and that's it no it's about networking and getting ahead and really kind of you know trying to stay on top of it you know because like i said one day you could be in one day you're out there's somebody that's younger more talented more handsome or prettier you know they come in and it's like a competition in many ways even though dorothy is saying that she didn't see it as a competition she loved what she she did but she had to work three times or four times harder than people that would have been the color white she is saying because again of the way that she would have been in Hollywood in the during this time it wasn't the easiest thing you know she had to endure a lot of in innuendos uh, a lot of um, men you know making crude remarks about women and I feel like she wasn't the only one there was a lot of white women as well that would have endured the same thing so again when I'm referring to white women or black women or African Americans in this video I'm doing it because again this was the era that they were in, which was a racist, uh, about racism, uh, civil rights, and um, African Americans uh, really succeeding. And she's someone that is looked upon from the African American community today as someone that is respected and, and admired because, again, she took, she, a lot of African Americans wouldn't have had the um, the strength or the courage to do what she did, which was to be immersed in, within that industry and being put out in front of people, you know, I'm sure there would have been a lot, there's a lot of African Americans that, you know, had some kind of role or that lived in California during this time, you know, but what I'm saying is that, you know, don't get it wrong that she was immersed within a, a higher society of um, Hollywood, you know, acting uh, stars, movie stars and, and stuff like that. So again, um, I feel like there was a lot of men fighting for her, competing for her attention. Again, older men that um, really, you know, didn't have any kind of self-respect. They really just wanted, you know, to have a night, like I said, with her because she was so beautiful. I feel like she rejected a lot of men. So she wasn't the, the easy type and don't get it twisted. Like I said, during this reading, um, I'm not going to sit here and talk bad about Miss Dandridge or even... Um, even allow anyone on my on my um, YouTube channel to talk bad about her. I'm not trying to portray her as a, you know, as a prostitute or anything like that. That's not what it, it was about. But I'm telling you, this is what she would have faced a lot of that. And some she did have some affairs, but I feel like it was just maybe a few. Um, and because there was no love within her marriage, you know, in her relationships. But um, again, this is something that was very real. And it it bothered her. It really bothered her. You would think that women or men, you know, or men, you know, would love the attention of women or women would love the attention of men. Um, you know, especially in being, you know, you're, you having, uh, some kind of, you know, 
special place in Hollywood. But she was she wasn't that type, you know, even though she loved the attention during on the camera, you know, when she was on camera and she was in, you know, media. Um, it was a very different story, like when you're, you know, socializing at a dinner party and, you know, there's someone that comes up to you and wants to have an affair, et cetera, you know, or propositions something or makes an in, in a window. You know, I feel like she was inappropriately touched by these men. Um, you know, they didn't have respect. There was, wasn't any limits, but she had to kind of control her temper and not really lose her uh, demeanor because, again, she would have lost out on opportunities. And, and so... It's very conflicting when you get into this and when I get into it and from her soul and what I get is like she would have been in a bad, bad depression um, and her health, you know, I feel like she was struggling with um, with eating. I feel like she didn't eat properly. So there would have been like some minor like eating disorder as well that she would have faced early on. I don't know if this is something that her family now that are living that would even know that story of her or they have heard it or thought of it or people have speculated, people that knew her. But um, that is something that I do get very much so from her. Um, now, when it comes to um, I'm going to get into the next slide so you can see here. When it comes to how she died, I'm going to get into now to how she died. <clears throat> what I'm getting from her soul is that there was foul play. I'm going to be very honest here. There was a conversation that she had supposedly on the phone right before she, she was supposed to go um, in September, I believe of 1965. Uh, she had a, uh, the next day she was going to be leaving to New York, I believe to do some kind of nightclub or some kind of special appearance. That's what I is, is documented. This is a fact supposedly. And she had a conversation that night with her sister-in-law or someone. She had a conversation with someone that was a family, like uh, within the family, you know, her family, like a sister-in-law or something like that. And supposedly that's that a conversation, how it went was somewhere along the lines that she started singing People by Barbara Streisand, you know, and that she seemed kind of incoherent. And I'm going to call that malarkey and bull. I don't feel like any of that happened. I feel like that story was given by that person and to the tabloids, first of all, because they were money hungry and I'm just keeping it real. They wanted money. And, you know, when you have a story and you position it, you tell them exactly what, even if it's a fabrication. I mean, who's to say that that really happened? Because Dorothy is not alive, you know, when they're having this this um, this interview. How do you know it, it really happened that way? Then the thing about the autopsy or whatever they had said they had done, you know, that showed a fracture of her foot and a piece of the bone marrow going traveling to the lungs. Hmm. Because in the interview that they had with that sister-in-law, Dorothy never mentioned having any kind of foot pain or any kind of, you know, um, any of that going on. Yet Earl Mills, her manager, is the one who found her, which is the guy that is hugging her. It might I add in a very, mm, you know, kind of intimate hug. That is a very intimate hug. That's not very much like a friend, you know, like, you know, I mean, I don't know much about love myself, but to me, that's, that's not a, you know, an embrace of uh, someone that is, you know, just a manager. There was definitely something going on between Dorothy and Earl Mills. Okay. So I do get that he had feelings for her. And I do get that they would have been involved um, intimately, definitely. And I feel like in many ways he was seeing other people as well, other women. And I don't feel like Dorothy was the only one, but I feel like he had strong feelings for her. But to a certain point, I feel like she felt that it was wrong. And um, and he's the guy again behind her. Uh, he's a, a lot younger. The older guy is, a, I don't remember who he is, but he's a, a someone that was... Um, also famous in Hollywood or well known in the world, but but uh, Earl Mills is the manager that found her supposedly lying naked and dead. And again, I call this all bull. So what really happened to Dorothy? What I get from her is that none of the autopsy is correct. All of it was like like I said, a cover up. People were paid off. 
back then, especially being that she was African American and these were white people. Uh, you know, and I don't mean that in a, you know, to sound racist against white people or have anything against white people either. So anyone listening to this video, please don't get that message twisted. I'm referring to it in that manner for the purposes and intent of this era that she was in so that you understand exactly what is going on. And I'm sorry, I'm constantly, you know, referring to that, but I have to because a lot of people that are listening are sensitive and they may think that I'm being prejudiced against white people or I'm, you know, being prejudiced against uh, African-Americans and I'm not, but I have to kind of refer to it in that way so that you understand. So I do feel like Earl had feelings for her. It was an unrequited type of situation. I feel like she was going to eventually see somebody else. She was seeing someone else. Earl had a problem with that. I feel like he was very possessive of her, very controlling and manipulative as well. Um, and, and again, the way that this, in, I could have chosen a different photo. There was one of him by himself, but I chose this one in a particular manner to get a point across of what really happened. I do feel like she would have been, um, you know, in a moment of rage attacked. I do feel like there was would have been some drugs in the system that were given, maybe possibly slipped into the drink, into a drink, and she drank it. And they, you know, he came over. They had that. That's the visions that I'm getting. That he came over. They had, you know, um, you know, some conversations. There was some alcohol involved, and something was slipped into her drink. She was knocked unconscious, and then, um. I feel honestly like she was, she was strangled. She was suffocated. Like, I feel like you can't, like when someone can't breathe, that's what I'm getting. And I feel like she would have been, um, there would have been a rape. There would have been sexual abuse. But again, all of this would have been covered up because again, he was a, a well-known white guy in, in Hollywood during all of this. And eventually her body was cremated. So there's no way, you know, that that's an easy way to never re-exhume the body years later because I feel like the family and other people would have had, you know, um, her friends would have been speculating, you know, what really happened to her. I don't feel like she was someone that had any health issues when I tune in because I can scan bodies even though I'm not a doctor. Uh, I am medical intuitive. And so in many ways when I do private readings as well, um, I can scan energies and I can see certain things in people. When I'm doing celebrity readings, um, I usually will comment on their health or things that I pick up, you know. Again, it's not a diagnosis, but from my standpoint, um, when I scan her body energy, you know, and I've looked at some most re recent photos of her closer to her, her passing, she didn't seem to have any health issues. I don't see her as someone that was an, uh, a drug addict, someone that had dependencies. So definitely there was foul play in her passing. And I do feel that Earl Mills was very much someone that would have been responsible in many ways. Again, whether this is can be validated or not, um, you know, I feel like it's going to be a mystery and people are going to always kind of speculate and people are going to maybe fall for what's in the media, in Wikipedia, because that's what's in Wikipedia, I'm telling you. And a lot of these celebrity deaths are wrong. They're inconsistent. A lot of them are cover-ups. And you would have thought that, you know, a lot of y'all that would be listening to this think that it's only happening in today's society, like from 90s on up, you know, to the 2018 that we're in right now. And that's not the case. You'd be surprised of how many of these actresses like Marilyn Monroe, Dorothy, and, you know, all these other actresses during this time and actors, you know, that their deaths um, would have been way different than what it was documented, what has been documented. And I, do, I don't feel like a lot of the people that were doing these autopsies and stuff were like, uh, the coroners and the, the autopsy people were like clean people. I don't feel like they really even cared or they were even that knowledgeable about, you know, so it was easier to just, you know, rule it any of any kind of way. But again, this is what I get from spirit. I do feel like, you know, her legacy is going to live on. She's going to continue to be someone in history that is admired and looked at. And being that she died so young, I do feel like she will and reincarnate. I don't feel like it's going to happen yet, but it will happen, you know, in the next couple of years. Her soul is going to come back. I don't feel like it's come back since then. 
you know, a lot of people may think that she would be already back, but I don't feel like it's it's happened yet. But ultimately, this is what I get from spirit. And, um, you know, it's just a very unfortunate situation. But what irks me as a, you know, a psychic medium is that I can see a lot of the BS that um, was really put out into the tabloids and out into the media, you know, um, that it's all a cover up for many, you know, many of these deaths, especially someone that was African American within the 1960s, you know, early 1960s. Definitely, definitely not something that was normal. I don't feel like her death was natural cause. It wasn't a suicide either or an accidental overdose either. It was definitely foul play. So, um, blessings and love and light if you did like this video please give it a thumbs up if you would like to suggest me doing any other uh, celebrity reading uh, please comment in the comment section below also if you'd like to book a private reading go to my website that's www.raymondguzman.net forward slash shop be sure to use promo code holidays for 10 percent off of any reading on my website the promo is good until december 31st 2018 and also be sure to check out my new book called Starseed Footsteps, which is a book about all kinds of spiritual topics. It's good for, you know, a Christmas gift. Um, check that out. You can order it on Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble. Or if you want an autographed copy, you can order directly off my website. And again, that link will be listed in the description box below. Have an amazing day. Blessings and love and light.